everyone, welcome to another video. If you're new here, hi, my name is Rit. I'm a watercolor and mixed media artist based in Austria, in Europe. And on my channel, I share my love for watercolors and mixed media. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And I would love for you to subscribe. I post new videos every week. So let's get into today's topic. So today I want to talk about five accessories that I think are essential for any watercolor enthusiast, or at least five accessories I would highly, highly suggest trying out. I've talked about the three basic supplies that any watercolor artists need in detail in many, many videos in the past. And I'm talking about, of course, watercolor paint, brushes, and paper. But today I want to talk about five things that might not be critical, but I would consider pretty essential. So let's get to it. I've talked about palettes in the past. What I want to focus on today is my recommendation to find a palette or a separate dish. It doesn't have to be a part of your palette that allows you to have a large mixing area. I really think that learning to mix your own colors and having a large space to do that, even if you don't paint very large, even if you don't paint on very large surfaces, I really think that contributes to an interesting result and just exploring what your watercolors can do. A lot of palettes have like small sections and I think those are really good when you want to just like have, you know, a small mixture of one color. But a large mixing area really shows you more of a range, the colors that you can get when you mix your watercolors. And also just allows you to play a bit more and then start adding more and more colors. And I feel like the palettes that have like small sections don't really allow for that. You, you can't you can't play with color mixing as much as you can on a large palette. And as I said, this doesn't have to be a part of your palette. You can just buy like a white dish or a butcher tray and use that for mixing and have a very, very small limited palette for your actual paints. That would work also. But if you haven't tried that till now, I highly, highly recommend trying a large mixing surface. Uh, it really is a joy to paint and I feel it just contributes to the flow and to the variety of colors and mixtures that are more unique and not just like straight out of the tube paint uh, that you can achieve. So a large mixing area would be my number one recommendation. Number two for an essential accessory I highly recommend trying is some sort of easel. Easel, is that the word? Sorry, English is not my first language, but I recommend a table easel probably because for most of us, you know, it, it could probably work better with our space. I think most of us work on a table or in a somewhat limited space and not everyone has like a space or the budget to buy like a freestanding, really, really nice easel. And there are very affordable options that you can get online and... I think, especially if you're starting out with watercolors, I think using that is really essential. I love using it. It just doesn't work so well for me because I have to film a lot of my paintings and then everything is always tilted. I can only do a very uh, kind of small, you know, slant. I can't really paint like this unless I change my filming situation. So that's why you won't necessarily see it in a lot of my videos. But when I paint without filming, I really, really enjoy it because you can control the angle and you can let watercolors do their thing and flow and use gravity to do that. And I just think it can bring a lot of joy and freedom to your process when you don't actually have to hold your paper if you want the water uh, to flow. And playing with that, playing with flow, playing with you know gravity and what it can do to your watercolors, I think every person who likes to paint in a loose manner would enjoy this. So uh, of course you can also make your own little contraptions and just put things under your 
a paper or block. That's what I do many times. But an easel that you can actually also get to quite um, like an almost vertical angle is really, really fun. Again, especially if you paint with a lot of water, um, I would highly suggest trying that. That brings us to number three. Speaking of water, a good spray bottle, I think, is absolutely essential. That's the first thing I usually touch when I start to paint because I spray all of my watercolors with water to uh, kind of activate them. I had a comment on a previous video where I mentioned that and I do want to um, address that. And if you are using very gooey, honey-based watercolors, then probably you don't need to spray your watercolors. But for most of the brands that I use, it is always, always helpful, if not essential. It helps me lengthen the lives of my brushes because I don't have to kind of... I don't have to make them work very hard to pick up the paint or to reactivate the paint. So that's the first thing I do. And then a spray bottle is also very useful if you want to play around and again, play with water and watercolor and see how things flow and how they move. So if you don't have that, I highly, highly recommend getting a nice one. There are all kinds of like continuous spray bottles that you can get usually in the hair section of let's say Amazon or something like this. And those are also very nice to have like for um, for your palette, especially if you have a large palette because you just that, get that continuous spray. But also a regular spray bottle will work great and I find it to be really, really essential. I work much harder and get, um, and don't get the results that I like if I don't spray my watercolors before I start. Number four is more of a, a tool to help you stretch your supplies and that is a paint tube squeezer. I don't know the official name, I'm gonna call it a squeezer. It's this contraption, you can usually find this in you know, home improvement places or you can order it online. If you use watercolor tubes, you need to have this in your life because this will help you kind of crank out the very, very last drops of your precious watercolor paint. I find it to be essential. I went, I think, a few years without it and I always try like to get as much out of the paint tube as I can. And then when I got the squeezer, I saw how much more I could get. It's usually almost an entire little half pan that you can get if you have a nice kind of heavy duty uh, squeezer type of thing. And I would recommend if you're getting it, just get something that is heavy duty and not uh, something that is, you know, plastic. Because some of those metal tubes of watercolors, like some of them come in metal tubes and those can be quite, um, you know, <laughs> hard <laughs> to work with. And so get yourself a tube squeezer and get all your watercolor out of that tube. Okay, so the last thing I want to mention today is one I've also been talking about quite a bit recently because the more I think about it, the more I wish I started doing this on day one when I started painting, and that is keeping some sort of a sketchbook or a log book or a reference book, whatever you wanna call it, on hand, it can also be just like a pile of papers that you keep together to record all of your notes and color experimentations and color palettes that you curated because this will save you so much time. You won't have to reinvent the wheel every time you sit down and paint. I mean, if you want to sit down and start thinking which colors to use, then that's great, do that. But if you continually, continuously keep a record of, you know, the color you used for every time you had a painting session, you will notice that in time you built your own library of colors and techniques. You can add whatever you want in there, but just keep a separate book for those things. And then you'll see that, especially when you only have like a short window of time where you can paint, you can just open this 
reference book and be immediately inspired by things that worked for you in the past and that you enjoyed in the past and it'll just kind of get you started much much faster than you would otherwise so these are my top five five <laughs> accessories that you should absolutely try with your watercolors i would love to know your suggestions and what you find absolutely essential i didn't go into the whole world of mixed media which you know that i love i'm all about using other media with my watercolors i wanted to focus today only on uh, kind of tools and accessories and not on other painting mediums so i might dedicate a future video for that topic kind of listing my favorite mixed media to use with watercolors because i definitely have some strong <laughs> contenders that are in the lead and yeah so I hope you enjoyed this uh, I don't know if how familiar you are with my background but uh, I am doing some changes to my room I bought the home edit book <laughs> and I watched the Netflix show that's the extent of my you know re my preparation no but there's like a huge mess like everywhere else behind besides like this area and I'm going to keep you updated on that ideally I would want to just like have a video you know show you the space before show you how it turns into what it'll hopefully turn into um, in the end but the idea is that I'm going to kind of divide my room into zones so this zone, like here I have this whole uh, Kallax from Ikea situation, this will be divided, this will be dedicated to my kind of textile, yarn, and other crafts. You know, I have some embroidery floss and I have some weaving supplies. So I'm going to dedicate this zone to all of that. And also behind me I have like a little Kallax that hopefully I can dedicate to that. Uh, I think the CD... <laughs> The CD case is going to have to go. I mean, I love my CDs. This is kind of my, you know, the my years of, I think for most people, the music that they discovered in their teens and maybe 20s kind of stays with them their entire lives. So my little CD collection has sentimental value to me, but realistically, I don't listen to it anymore which is kind of sad maybe I should but for now I just it's it takes up space in my room and it's affecting um, my concentration just having like so many things in my room so I think that's gonna go I have here an entire library with some art books that I want to keep but also a lot of you know like diaries <laughs> from my teenage years and I do want to keep them. They have definite sentimental value for me, but I don't think I need them here. So for now, I'm going to take them out and hopefully try to find like a different space for them. I also have probably, you know, not probably, I have about 10 slots of a Calax situation um, that is currently filled with photo albums with my scrapbooking pages for my scrapbooking days ideally I want that to be in an area where somewhere around the living room where people can just like pull out an album and sit and and look through it but I don't have that place now in our living room so I think I'll just remove it from my room so I can focus and see how much space I have it's like very difficult for me that I have so many things that I don't want or don't need in my room so the library here will hopefully i think i'll keep it because i also want to buy um as few new furniture as possible i'm trying to find things like source things from you know second hand uh like a the leading second hand website here in austria and find because there's like so much of these ikea things um that people want to sell so as much as I would like a new bookcase because this one is you know it's already like buckling and it's just like the cheapest thing 
I'll probably work with what I have. So ideally I would have all my books here, like all of my books, the art books, the knitting books, all of those here, photo albums somewhere else, childhood diaries somewhere else, not in my room. And then the entire area, like the entire wall there is going to be dedicated to art supplies. And I have to think about, I currently have like, um, you know, 16, um, spaces Kallax there and I have about a meter more than a meter above it of like free space and I'm thinking I might just add like a couple of shelves where I can put like store things that I don't use on a daily basis but still want to have around so for now you know it could be like acrylic paint or something like this or um, I don't know maybe some paper supplies that I still want to keep but don't want to but don't need to have uh, on hand and then there's a whole wall so I removed two desks that I had and now I have one desk and another desk that I think I will keep for painting with Lily when she comes, when she wants us to paint together, because I do want a space for that. And I would ideally like it to be separate from my uh, watercolor painting area, which has all of my, you know, expensive artist grade paints, which she doesn't need to use. Uh, I have some great cheaper alternatives. Uh, and then there's the wall, which I also want. Currently it has like some of these, you know, metal bars that you can put on top of them, these kind of cups, again, from uh, Ikea. I think I will remove all of it and put something different there. Not sure what. That's the problem. It's kind of just me with my mess and my thoughts and not great building skills. So I kind of want like a cheap, easy solution that still looks great. I mean, I can hang a few shelves and also my husband can help me. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. So it's like a process, it looks horrible right now and I'm trying not to kind of let it bring me down and kind of slowly trying to do things like baby steps, baby steps. But yeah, so I definitely want to update you on that. Also, uh, if you're wondering about my stamps, I get all the time messages uh, when the stamps are coming back in stock. They are coming back in stock next week. So I will send out a newsletter the moment that they are available in my shop. The way that it works is they have already been shipped out from the manufacturer to the fulfillment center that I use, which is in the US because most of you are in the US. And also my uh, stamp manufacturer is in the US. And so um, the way that it works is I notify the fulfillment center that they're getting a shipment they get it and they put the things in stock and so it all happens uh not automatically but without me having to actually uh, update the shop uh so it just suddenly appears in my shop ready again in stock but once that happens i will send out a newsletter i'm just mentioning it mentioning it, mentioning this because sometimes some of you uh, are faster than my newsletter and you know you manage to just go in the shop uh, exactly at the moment or a couple of hours after uh, the stamps come back in stock because as I said it's not up to me and the places in the US I'm in Europe so they work different hours like their main operational hours are while I'm asleep so it's very possible that the stamps will become available when I'm sleeping and then only in the morning will I be able to send out a newsletter so I just want to mention that, but I will send out a newsletter and also update on YouTube and on Instagram when they're back in stock. I ordered hopefully a nice amount enough to, uh, for all of those, for all of you that wrote me. So I definitely have enough. I don't know how long it will take to sell out. I'm, I think this time uh, it might last a longer, it might, la it might take longer to sell out because I did order more. But, so I don't want to tell you, you know, you have to buy because it'll sell out in hours. It's not going to sell out in hours, but I can't tell you if it's going to be in this shop for a week or a month. 
I don't know. It depends on how many people buy. And so if you want it, please buy it as soon as possible. Uh, if you want the stamps, there are three sets available. I have lots of videos talking about them, showing examples. They're really, really fun. Uh, I know a lot of you love them and enjoy them and use them all the time. Thank you for sharing that with me. Thank you for writing me. Thank you for tagging me on Instagram. So that's the situation. I don't have any plans to do another restock. And so I can uh, guarantee that I won't be doing a restock during the summer because the summer is like vacation time for my kids and I, I know I won't have time to dedicate to that. So please, please, please grab, if you're interested, grab them in this restock because for sure there's not going to be another one before September or October. Yeah, that is it. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Oh, for those of you who sometimes ask me, so I did crochet what I'm wearing myself super happy about it it's like a twin set and i'm very excited and i love the colors and everything it's really fun to make your own clothes i have to say so thanks again for watching have a wonderful weekend take care bye bye